Hello everyone and welcome back to Age Nagash, which is a channel dedicated to Age of Sigma. And in this video, we're going to look at how to start a Night Haunt army. So what I will say first off is I don't have that much experience with this army, so it won't be as in-depth as my how to start Legions of Nagash um, video. But this video is mainly going to be looking at what is the best value for money um, way to start collecting this army. So, first off, you're going to want to get yourself the Night Haunt Battle Tome, as that is, well, a Battle Tome, if your army's got one, 9 out of 10 times, you're going to want to get it, as it's going to enhance your um, gameplay, really, as it's going to give you um, a lot more special rules, even if it hasn't got allegiance abilities inside it, it's going to have the um, battalions of how you want to build your army around, but in case of the Night Haunt book, you are going to get allegiance abilities in it as it is a very um, recent battle tome at the time of this recording. So what do you also get in this book? Obviously you get um, all the fantastic lore, what's in this book, you get also like painting guides of how to paint particular bits on the Nighthorn and uh, if you're an experienced painter you might not need to um, you know have any painting guides or whatever but if you really want to paint them how they are like on the boxes and you're wondering like how do they paint that sort of like a witch flame and elements like that then it's going to be in this book. So, um, as like I say, you're always going to want to have the battle tome. What about the actual models? Because that really is the exciting bit of collecting an army. So, we have a variety of um, boxes you can buy to uh, start yourself in this army. And the first one we're going to talk about is the uh, big Soul Wars box. Now, this is quite a big box. It's quite an expensive box as well. It is £95, but for what you get in this box, it is good value. You get two small armies, so you get a Stormcast army and you get a Nighthorn army. Now the Stormcast army, of course, you can just sell that on or you can maybe keep it to collect for yourself or um, maybe to get a friend into the hobby. But if you want to sell that on, you're already making money back on this box. So if we look at um, the Nighthorn side of this box, that's the bit we're really interested in this video. So what do we get inside it? We get a Knight of Shroud on Steed, we get a Lord Executioner, we get a Guardian of Souls, we get a Spirit Torment, we get four Grimgast Reapers, we get five Glaive Wraith Stalkers, and we get a 20-man strong unit of Chain Rasp Horde. So that's quite that's quite a bit of models. Um, and also quite a few of the characters in this box you're going to get um, are going to be sort of things that you want in your army. Not all of them and it is going to depend on what sort of build you go for of course like everything is going to be situational. But um, there's a lot of things in this um, box like you know the characters I was mentioning which can really um, add synergy to your army and are going to be if not an auto take they're going to be something you're going to want to add in in most of your games. So, um, what else do you get, like, breaking down if we go into, like, the infantry units, um, the, starting with the chain rest Horb, you get a unit of 20. Now, that is, um, very good. Before we had all these separate boxes of, um, Night Haunt when you could really only buy the Souls box when it first came out, um, we didn't really put a value on how much, like, the unit of chain rest Horb is worth, a unit of 20 of them. And then they started to sell them separately. I think it was a couple of weeks ago they started to sell them separately. And Games Workshop is charging £25 for 10 of these models, which I really think, especially for an easy to build kit, is an extraordinary amount of money um, compared to other models they are selling. Um, but again, if, that, if that's the price they're setting, so that's how much they are worth, you know, from Games Workshop. So that on its own you get £50 worth of chain rasp hordes in this box set. So, and of course we're not talking about um, if you want to buy these models second hand because obviously you can get the army for a hell of a lot cheaper but that's a completely different ball game. So we are mainly just talking about what the price is like from Games Workshop. So, you get um, £50 worth of chain rasp hordes in this box so that means that everything else in this box is costing you £45. That's a way you can look at it. And in your Nighthorn army, you are going to want to have Chain Rasp Hordes. There's some builds that maybe you don't need them. You can make up for them in different areas. But for your standard Nighthorn army, you're going to want to have Chain Rasp Hordes. And you're going to want to have quite a few of them. So those are the heroes and the basic infantry you get in this box. Which um, all come in the correct unit sizes you would imagine. 
However, when we move on to our next two units, they do not come in the correct unit size um, according to the General's Handbook and the um, Nighthorn Battle Tome. So if we start with the least annoying um, complication made by this, shall we say, which are the Glaive Wrath Stalkers. Now what I will say, and again that accounts for all the models in this box, more than enough, their models are really, really nice. So, you know, from a modeling point of view, there's that, and they are a pleasure to paint. But, um, you get five Glaive Wrath Stalkers in this box, but they come in units of four. So, it's not the worst case, it just means you're going to have one extra. Which, of course, isn't going to be the worst thing in the world um, by a long stretch, but it is a little bit annoying. It's like that one extra model you're never really going to use because you think, oh, I'll just add it on to... Um, the next unit, you know, and I'll buy some more to build up the unit. But they will come in unit sizes of four, and that's what they currently come at the moment. So you're still... Um, so if you buy another box of them, let's say, and then you have um, nine, and you would only really be able to take eight um, out of those nine, so you're still going to have that one left over. So again, it's not anything really bad at all um, in any, you know, like I say, stretch of the imagination. But it's... For me, it sort of like niggles away, it's a little bit annoying. But when we get to the uh, a more annoying unit size, um, which will be the Grimgast Reapers, and of course, again, models are awesome, but in a gameplay perspective, um, they are, they've got very good rules. I know some people have gone to town with the amount of how many of these guys they bring. And in that case, you're probably gonna, how many of these boxes you're buying, you're probably gonna make up for um, the difference in unit size in this box. But, going back to the original point with them, they come in, um, you get four of them in the Soul Wars box, and they come in minimum sizes of ten. So for me, that's, uh, like we said, the, um, you know, the last unit I was just talking about, the um, Glaive Wrath Stalkers. It's a little bit annoying for them, because you get one extra you're not going to use. However, with the Grimgast Reapers, <laughs> you get four in this box. And they come in minimum size units of 10. And I find that very annoying because it's not even like minimum size units of 5. And it's like, oh, uh, I thought maybe just convert one up from somewhere else. So I just, you know, use my Calm Wraith in there just to make it count as one of them because they pretty much look very similar. No, you're, you're down by 6. So that is quite a bit of a problem. As this means you're going to need to try and make up for them from somewhere else. Now you could think, well I'm just going to buy an extra box of um, Grimgrass Reapers and that's probably what I'd do as well. But they come in units of, um, you know, you get 10 in a box when you buy them separately. Which is how many you need to have in a unit, you know, for the minimum. But then you're going to be left with your four, um, you know, Grimgrass Reapers left over, which you're not really going to use. Um, I mean, yes, if you buy multiple of the um, sort of like starter boxes, um, you might end up with the right number eventually, but I think that's a real pain. Why can't they just put these unit sizes, um, you know, why can't they just put these models you get in the big box to the right unit size? It's a really annoying. Um, they did this in the first Age of Sigma box as well, um, back when it was Corn versus Stormcast, but not to the same extent of how annoying it is in this one. Um, like, I've done a bit of a review in the Soul Wars box before and I gave it a lot of praise but looking at it again and a few people mentioned it to me as well these problems with unit sizes and that is my only gripe with it really is that there's, there's most of the units you know are maybe in the right size you know to be fair actually most of them aren't in the right size on both sides of the spectrum and I think that's like a really sort of lazy part from Games Workshop I mean even if they just made Grimgast Reapers as the example here, um, if they just made them minimum sized units of five and they just put one more of them in this box, um, that would have solved the problem. And I know, you know, oh, that might have like complicated things with how they produce them, you know, on the sprues, how they're made in the molding factory and things like that. But I honestly don't care. They're set in this box for £95 and they essentially are just bits of plastic. They should at least make them the, um, you know, the right size, which um, is, to be honest, one of the reasons. I haven't really pushed on the Nighthorn. I mean, for me personally, I've already got like, I think about 14,000 points of death at the moment, so I'm holding back on death a little bit. But I bought this Soul Wars box and um, I got all the models and all that sort of thing, and then I also bought the Nighthorn Battle Tome. 
and I look for it and it's like none of these units match up apart from like on the Nighthorn side obviously the heroes because it's going to be pretty hard for them to muck that one up on the unit size for a hero the Chainrest Horbs um, yeah nothing wrong with them correct unit size but when it came to the other two uh, mainly particularly the um, Grimgrass Reapers because I wanted to really sort of focus on them at that time I was like well, I'm just these four here I'm never going to use yes I could paint them up and um, you know build them paint them up and then when I buy another box of Grimgrass Reapers that means there's four on the new ones I just bought that I don't have to paint and stuff because I've already done it but that defeats the object that's four that's just going to be sitting there unless you want to convert them as a um, car race which you could do or something along those lines they really are just wasted um, what I think is a big big shame from Games Workshop um, so that to be honest that is a little bit of a rant but just why can't they just make them the same size like I said yeah, it might cost them a bit more money, or might complicate things for them. I don't care, they charge an incredible amount for their products. And um, this is like, I'm speaking from the UK, I mean, if you live on the other side of the world, um, or even just America, the prices just go up even more with the postage. So I really feel like they should get this right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking about it here, because I don't want to rant on for any longer, but it's just really sort of annoyed me. You know, it's an expensive box, it might as well be £100, and the units in it are not even the correct size which are really annoying but what I will say about this box is if you're completely new to Age of Sigma and uh, maybe Warhammer as you know as a whole it is a good box because if you're I'm an R and what sort of armies you want to go for you get two in this box so you get to pick um, and if you haven't done much building and painting before um, it's obviously all easy to build kits so there's that for you you know you're going to build them a bit quicker and it's going to be a lot easier for you hence the name but um, it's also going to give you a bit of time to practice paint and stuff as like if you are completely new you probably don't care that the unit sizes aren't right you might just want to paint them and see what uh, colours you like and stuff and then you think oh I like these but these are my test models I don't they're maybe not my best painting I don't really want to use them and then you think oh I'll just buy 10 more of these green grass reapers and I know how I want to paint them now so the four models that I painted from the Solus box I'm not really, not really bothered about using them anyway I'm going to start fresh with these ones. So it might work like that, but I'm just thinking for more experienced um, players like myself and collectors, it's just a little bit annoying and a bit frustrating for me. So how I would rate this Soul Wars box is, um, and particularly you know, for the Nighthorn and the Storm, because it's really mad, but for this video, the Nighthorn, um, if you're completely new to Age of Sigma and or Warhammer, um, it is, I would say, the box to go for, because it's going to give you all your rules in it as well. So... Moving on from that Solus box, and I do apologise for ranting a little bit about that, but I just basically had to get it off my chest because I did find it quite annoying that they, um, like I say, um, don't give you the correct unit sizes and it really mucks up trying to build on those units later. So moving on, um, the next one we have down from that, and this is all part of the like Soul Wars range, I suppose you could call it, is the Tempest of Souls. So this is essentially a mini version of the big Soul Wars box and what I will say as um, comparing all these Soul Wars boxes the biggest and most expensive one is the best value for money um, and the steps down you go there's essentially the um, the Soul Wars big box um, which like I say £95 the Tempest of Soul which is £50 and then a smaller one and the more expensive the box the better value for money is it because you know the more money you're paying the better of a deal you get essentially so, moving on to the Tempest of Souls, what you get in this is a uh, Lord Executioner, a 10-man unit of Chainrass Hordes, five Gleifrath Stalkers, and then, of course, your four Grimgast Reapers. So, again, obviously I've just mentioned that you're only getting four Grimgast Reapers in here. Um, yeah, it's annoying for the reasons I have just mentioned, but maybe less annoying because this is a cheaper box, so, you know, you can expect to get less models. And um, the Glaive Raph Stalkers, yeah, you're getting one extra there, but uh, doesn't really. I'm not really too bothered if you get more than more models than you need, but getting less models than you need is annoying. Um, and then your ten Chain Rass Horde, like I said, is um, it's obviously half the amount of the um, twenty Chain Rass Hordes you get in the main Solus box, but um, technically you're still getting twenty five pounds of Chain Rass Hordes, making this anything else you get in this box just an extra 25 pounds so you look at it like that it's it's still a good deal but what i will say is that if you are going for these soul Wars sort of boxes um 
you're better off just going for the uh, big box as it is the uh, best value for money. But this one of course is good, you know, depending on you know what budget you have, you might not be able to get the Soul Wars box, um, you know, the big £95 one. So it has got its uses there and again if you and your mate are thinking about maybe trying Age of Sigma, um, this box might be perfect for you, you know, you both have £25 in your pocket. Um, put it together and you can get this and you both get an army out of it. Now, like the unit sizes aren't going to be perfect of course and I think the Stormcast ones are even less perfect than this one. But um, it's you, if you're brand new you're not really going to bother too much about it. You're not really going to care too much uh, more than likely. So it could fit your needs right there. Now when we move on to our last of the Solus boxes, uh, this is really quite a lot smaller um, it is only 25 pounds this box and um, it's a little bit different as well it's not really incorporating exactly the same models you're going to get from the big solace box and the tempest of soul box but um, you are getting yourself some of them are the same units some are a bit different so we go into it so on the night haunt side which is the only side i'm going to talk about we get four glaive stalkers and then four um, Mermorn Banshees and I do apologize if that's not how you pronounce the Banshee name but I have no idea how you pronounce that so um, the Banshees is a new unit we don't get that in the other two boxes and they are rather quite good when I first looked at the uh, War Scroll I was a little bit unsure about them um, because they seemed a bit a bit like well the one wound models uh, with a lot of the stuff in the Nighthorn but they seemed very much quite glass cannily with their abilities but after uh, doing a bit more research on them and talking to um, Twin Coot, who I did some joint videos with, and in the last video he said he's taken these to the battle before, and they can be really quite nasty. So, um, you get those, and also their, their models look awesome. You're going to get your four um, Glaive Wrath Stalkers, and that's the nice thing about it. You're going to get four. So that is the, um, you know, that might be one less model than the um, how many you get in the other boxes, and it might sound a bit weird how I'm happy about it but for me and probably more than likely my OCD um, it really makes me happy that you're getting a correct unit size for that one and yeah in case you didn't know the Banshees uh, the unit of four you get there that's also going to be the correct minimum size for that unit so that's nice there and then you do also get your like I said the Stormcast guys which we won't really go into too much but you get a few of those models and then you do also get a small gaming mat which um, you do also get one of these in the Tempest of Soul box. I don't think I mentioned it there. And the one you get, they are they are quite small mats. I believe the one in Tempest of Soul is going to be a bit bigger. And that's obviously because it's a more expensive box compared to the Storm Strike. So in summary of this box, um, again, we've got a few of the Soul Wars boxes. They are nice. And in particularly, if you're brand new to Age of Sigma and, um, or, you know, like I say, Warhammer in a general. And this box is quite nice though, because even if you're... Um, you know more experienced the units you're going to get in this box on the night haunt side are going to be the correct unit sizes so you can bolster them onto your ranks and it's also you know it's only costing you 25 pounds so it's not that much amount of money and again if you your mate of you know think about getting interested into um, age sigma or warhammer um, it's going to cost you 12 pounds 50 each and you get a, a tiny little mat to um, you know play your battles on so makes it a little bit more realistic and it's quite nice and it also um, again with the other uh, like Soul Wars boxes they do come with the like War Scroll cards for these um, units so not that the rules in Age of Sigma will cost you money anyway because they won't they're free um, but you get a nice little physical copy with it so that's nice and you get some dice and a ruler so those are what I like to call the Soul Wars boxes and I think that's probably not the correct name for them because I think it's only really the big box that's called the Soul Wars box but you know I couldn't really think of another name. So the other option we have um, when it comes to how do we start this army in a you know form of you know a box set if you like is the um, start collecting boxes. So the start collecting box we have for the Nighthorn is going to be the start collecting malignant now this isn't wasn't really made for a nighthorn army as per se um as this came out a long long time before the uh, nighthorn came out i think maybe it came out at least like a year before it and maybe two years i'm thinking um because it was the f came out in the first wave when games Workshop started doing start collecting boxes that's probably more like two years ago now 
Um, but what you get in this box, it's going to be the older Nighthawk models, so some we haven't already talked about. And that's going to be, you're going to get five hex rates in this box, um, which of course can be built into Black Knights, but not for a Nighthawk army, as per se. You're going to want the hex rates, obviously. Uh, three Spirit Hosts, which are of course very nice. Arguably, in the new edition of Age of Sigma, how they've changed um, uh, certain abilities, and they've done this with the Spirit Hosts. Um, they used to be able to do a mortal wound to the enemy on a 6 plus to hit, um, which was great because these guys had 6 attacks uh, per model, and um, you used to do various ways to give them pluses to hit, and they were doing mortal wounds all over the place. However, now it's changed to when they roll a dice on a 6 um, to hit, it does a mortal wound to the enemy. So the difference here, it used to be a 6 plus, so you could, um, by ways of making their to hit roll better, essentially, um, it was easier for them to do mortal wounds. Now it's a fixed 6, so it doesn't matter how many pluses they get to hit, they're only doing mortal wounds when they roll a 6. But, so I first looked at it being quite negatively. However, now um, it means the enemy, when they make you minus to hit, um, you're still going to be able to do your mortal wounds on sixes, which with uh, Spirit Host before it was an absolute pain when the enemy made you minus one to hit because now you, you just had a unit that, um, if I didn't mention it, they hit on fives normally. So with minus one to hit back in the day, um, they were hitting on sixes and not doing any more wounds. Doesn't matter, they have loads of attacks, they generally just turned into basically being a shield wall at that point. They weren't really adding much else to the game. Um, so now they always get to do more wounds. I think overall it's better. I have changed my mind on that. I do think it is better. And um, yeah, I think that makes sense. And like I say, these models are about a bit older. Um, quite a bit older actually compared to the new Nighthaunt stuff. But in particularly the Spirit Hosts, they do really um, carry over into the new range. They do really fit in with the uh, Nighthaunt, I do feel like. They don't feel like, oh, they're the old models. I don't really want them in the army. Doesn't really. They don't really fit in aesthetically. I personally think they do fit in quite aesthetically. Even some people say the hex race, maybe not that much, but I think the um, cloaks and stuff on the horses, um, they have, it might be to do with the paint scheme, but they have tied it in well with the uh, like the new mounted night haunt. So, on to the last model in this box, and this is going to be the Mortis engine. Now, the Mortis engine is a particular curious little model because it's in a start malignant box. You think malignant night one is that the same thing? It feels like it's the same thing. It's most certainly not. So the Mortis engine is not a night one model, and that annoys me ever so much. It's annoys me since I ever got into Age of Sigma, and it still annoys me now. And in particular, how at this stage, this box was essentially the way to get into a night horn army. Night horn was a lot smaller back then, and so on. But this was the box of how to get into it. But if you wanted to take just a night horn army. You couldn't put this guy in there. It was that annoying. And this, it's more, you know, it's more ghostly than the ghost. You know, it's more feral than them, essentially. You know, it's got ghost cavalry and, like, skeletons and all that sort of thing lifting this thrown up. Um, it's got, I think, three, you know, bloody banshees going around the uh, top of the spire on it, um, on its reliquy. So it's really annoying because it was so uh you know night want esh i don't know if that's how you would describe it but that's what i like to think of it it was it really fit like it fitted into night horn but it didn't um annoyingly and i believe even you can't actually take this guy as an ally because night horn can only actually ally with soul blight and other death lords so it can't even have this in your night horn army so even if you buy this box and you think oh well I'm gonna build it up and you know take it as an ally you can't do that so what do we do with it now what we do with it is what a lot of people have done and actually basically get this model um, uh, when it's on the sprue cut out um, you know things that you are gonna use in the Nighthorn army and this is gonna be like your free um, banshees you have going around that reliquary on this model um, it's not too hard to actually just use them as normal banshees and put them on bases themselves um, it, fit, it fits in rather well and they add a different, um, you know, you get a different Banshee model opposed to the um, only Banshee model you can buy separately, you know, with a dagger. You're getting different poses out of it. So you, you can use it as that and in that way you're getting free Banshees. So that's already really good value. And then when you come down to all the spirits that are lifting up the throne, um, I believe there are two arm rays that you can cut out of that sort of 
big piece of model. Um, there might be more, there might be a bit less, but you can really sort of work magic with this kit and really get a good use out of it. And then if you do that, you think, well, I'm left with the throne that's never going to do anything. I'm left with that bit and that bit, and it just feels like a big kit I've cut up, and I'm not using a lot of it. Trust me, um, if you're already experienced, you'll know this, but there's going to be so many things you could use that in a, um, you know, a bits box. You'll always use those bits at a later date. So... Um, this box, I think, is particularly good value. So if we just look at it like that, um, you're getting yourself, you know, obviously those, uh, you know, hex rays, those five hex rays, which are, you know, £20 by themselves. You get yourself those spirit hosts, that's our £16 by themselves, so that's already £36. Um, and then when it comes to when you cut up this reliquary, um, you're going to get... Um, Let's just say a calm race because I don't want to say that you get a whole bunch of calm race and you don't because I can't really remember. I think it might be one, it might be two, you can cut out of it, but we're just going to say it's one, you know, basically not to oversell this thing. So you're going to get one of those, which is going to cost £9, so that brings it up to £45. And then the free tomb banshees you're going to get is going to come to a total of £27. And that's going to end up being um, £72 in total if my maths is right um value you're going to get out of this box and you're going to have a few little extra bits of spares to put in a kit box as well which you um you know will use because you know as everyone will say the bits box does always come in handy so i think that's personally quite a good way um into this army i think it's quite a good value way um start collecting box especially how it's quite an old box and it probably wasn't produced um with this in mind um yeah, I think it's pretty good. You're going to have to be a bit creative with it, like I say, to basically make your own Tomb Banshees and like Calm Wraith and so on. But um, you can get a really good mileage out of this box. But you might just want the newer Night Haunt stuff. And, you know, I completely understand that because, you know, it is sort of like the more shiny models, if you like, because they are a lot newer. Um, and then if that is the case, this box isn't going to be any interest in you. But I do feel like if you do quite like the Spirit Host and the Hex Rays, um, this box is really good value and especially if you like um tomb banshees you're gonna be more than spoiled with the amount you're gonna get in this box so those are the main four boxes um you know big bundle boxes if you like to get into nighthorn now there was a fifth one and i believe it was called the shrieker host but you can't get that from games workshop anymore so i'm not really going to talk about that much because i'd like to sort of just mainly talk about Games Workshop when I'm talking about buying models and stuff. Otherwise, if you want to start talking about all these independent retailers and like second-hand market, uh, th there's no real scale to price because people can sell um, anything for anything. So I like to keep Games Workshop as a nice like fixed price we can look at. And um, this box, though, it was quite good, but as you can't buy from Games Workshop anymore, um, I'm not really going to talk about it because it was only a limited time box, so I don't know if it's still going to be about um, so I don't want to tell you guys about it and then you think okay I want to get that box and then by the time you, you've seen this video and then you look online Noah sells it and you're going to be rather annoyed. So we're going to keep those as the four main ways to get into um, Night Haunt. but if you want to build a certain battalion um, for your Night Haunt, and like I can't recommend it enough um, when you start your Night Haunt army first buy the Battle Tome even if you're just buy it in the store um, when you go to you know your local hobby store your games workshop um, buy the book and then before you buy any models have a look through it and look at the battalions and think which one I want to build my army around now of course you do not have to build your army around a battalion in any stretch of imagination um, but it gives you a really nice sort of um, foundation on how you want your army to um, be essentially how you want it to play on the table um, which is what I really like to do. So, um, I've done this, and then if I was to do Night Haunt, the one I would go for is the Shrieker Host. Now, this is interesting because it's mainly made up of Banshees. So what we've got in here is one Tomb Banshee, we get two units of Dread Scythe Hardens, and then two units of Mirmorn Banshees. Now, again, if I've pronounced these names wrong, I do apologize, but I'm probably never gonna be able to pronounce them right if I have. So, um, now where this is interesting is unless you get your you know first strike little Soul Wars box set that's the only box that you're going to get your um, any unit that's going to be in this battalion and that's going to be the Mermol Banshees 
and you only get four in that and I don't really want to buy multiples of those boxes to get four every time just because it might save me a bit of money on the other models I get in that box that I don't really want. So what I'm going to have to do with this battalion is actually buy individual boxes. Now, this might um, go against what I said about earlier about getting you know bundle boxes because they are generally a lot cheaper. But for me, this, this is the battalion I want to build and I don't get any battle lines um, included in this battalion. So I'm going to have to add in some later, um, which are probably just going to be the Chain Rascal. But... Um, I really want to build this battalion, it's my main thing, I'm not really bothered about getting the bundle box. So what that means is that I am going to have to buy these individual units. And things can get quite expensive this way, because like the Dreadscythe um, Hardens um, are going to cost me £27.50 for 10 of them. And I need at least two units, so you're going to need to have two of those boxes. And that's if you want to go a minimum size. It's going to get quite expensive for doing this. And um, a Tomb Banshee, that's that's going to be at least my worries. I actually have two Banshees already. Or, like I said, that uh, Mortis Engine, you can make three out of that. And they only cost £9 separately. So, that's not a problem at all. But then we get to the two units of uh, Mirmorn and the Banshees. Uh, they're not too bad, to be honest. They're easy build kits, so they're a bit cheaper. Um, £10 for four of them, which is more than doable. Even if you just had two units of four, I would want to have bigger units of that, because I think they are a lot better when they're bigger units. But... Um, then it's not too bad price. So the most expensive thing that's going to cost us are the dread size. And like I said, £27.50 for a unit of 10. Yeah, that's expensive. But if you're getting into Warhammer or Age of Sigma, you, let's just face it, you're going to have to realise that maybe that mortgage you want on a house is going to have to wait a little bit longer. Or um, if you've already got a house, maybe everything else in your life is going to have to take a bit of a sacrifice. Because Warhammer is very, very expensive. However... Uh, if you're like me, you always get what you pay for, I find. Um, I, I get so much enjoyment out of Warhammer, it's worth the money to me. So, um, bearing that in mind, £27.50 for a unit, yeah, it's not too expensive, is it, compared to other things? And even if you feel like, oh, maybe it's a little bit, um, just look at Forge World, and then that will make your idea of what is expensive come, <laughs> like... <laughs> way up in the margin of things and you look at games workshop again you think it's all really cheap so that's what i do if i think if i'm questioning about oh should i buy that unit it's quite expensive that model is quite expensive i look on forge world and then go back and i think this is actually really cheap i should buy it um that's what i do anyway um take that as you will so um that's really everything covered in the uh night on how to get started now this is a like i say a shorter than the legion of the gash one which went on for quite a long time and this one is not going in depth for what units can do and what are the best units and how you want to build the army. Because that's not what this video is about. Because, like I said to you guys um, at the start of this video, I do not have much experience uh, with Nighthorn at all, really. So I don't want to sell you loads of stuff and go, oh yeah, this thing is like absolutely amazing. You're going to want to have, I don't know, 30 of these guys. And you're going to want to get that. You're going to want to get that. And you want to get that. And it's going to be amazing. Because if I, if I said that to you guys, I'd be completely talking about my ass and lying so much. And there's no there's no reason to do that. Um, I'm not going to pretend I know stuff when I don't. So I just wanted to give you guys some advice on what are the cheaper ways to start the army. And um, if you do want to get down to more uh, tactics about the army, I have done a video about Nighthorn. But that was before the update. So some of the... Uh, units have changed a little bit but to be honest they've only changed for the better and i think the only changes they have got for most of the older nighthorn stuff is um they do mortal wounds on like sixes to hit i believe so um like i say um if you do want more sort of like you know in-depth tactics and stuff there's plenty of other videos out there and there's plenty of fantastic youtubers who do uh, provide that sort of stuff so yeah i didn't basically want to lie to you guys and tell you what was great because essentially I'm probably not the most knowledgeable person in this area when it comes to Nighthorn. Um, right, okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you um, some help or uh, some information for you to um, build your Nighthorn army. If you've got any more questions, please let me know down in the comments. Um, just ask away and I will get back to them. I read all the comments and I reply to, if not all of them, um, certainly most of them. And the ones I haven't are basically just because I haven't got a notification from YouTube telling me that someone's comments on my video, so I do apologise for that. And um, yeah, so like I say, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And if you could please like, subscribe and comment, um, as that does always help me make as many videos as I can 
Um, I would have liked to have made a video last week as well because I've been trying to do one video a week. However, um, work's been a bit manic at the moment. I had to work 12 days on the trot and I've got a day off now. So I wanted to um, get back to at least put one, you know, one video up there to um, provide some content for you guys. So again, I thank you guys very much for watching this. If you've got any questions or any um, suggestions for videos you'd like me to do, let me know in the comments. And until next time, remember, Nagash is all and all is one in the gash.